kind of feels weird to be doing somewhat live commentary over Honeycam gameplay. Hmm. A little bit weird, but yes, this is the redemption run of the Golden Gear Shift. And, uh, of course, we end up getting the achievement, sort of spoilers for that, but you would know <laughs> that we would, we would eventually get it. Coming down to the end of the series, uh, not quite sure on, like, how many episodes this is going to end up being. But, like, I'm going to assume, like, there's going to be at least four more runs. And then this is finished. I'm not sure. <laughs> Uh, but yes, I think I used the s same strategy as I did in the actual run, but to a better effect here, seeing as, um, one, I got luckier, and uh, two, I could, like, actually spam click, and I think it works out as a little bit faster, which is weird. Um, a little bit off topic here, but um, this is probably the best chance I can get to actually explain my thoughts on um, the new recent Pokemon Direct. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> a region based on UK is. It's like, yeah, that's fine. Um, at least it's not Japan again. It's like. <laughs> although I do. Can I see see it theme fitting here since we've had four regions based on Japan, two based on American states, and now two based in Europe. I think it, it's, I think it's about time that um Pokemon goes a bit down south a little bit because I think every one of them, apart from maybe Hawaii, I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, Hawaii is definitely in the southern hem hemisphere. And maybe the region that um Harwin's based on. I'm not sure. But yeah, I think it's about time that um Harwin goes oh Pokemon goes south. Um This could just be me being Australian, but like Gala Like I I, I cannot pronounce the R uh, in Gala. Like if I do it sounds like I'm saying like, Gala, as in like a ball or some shit. So, um, one thing I tweeted is a, a picture of a Galar bird, because <laughs> if I ever make Gen 8 content, um, I'm, I'm referring to the region as Galar, or Galar, not Galar, because, um, we Australians pronounce our R's weird. Hmm. Getting up down to the starters, uh, I guess I'll go in appearance as what um they revealed. Starting off the school bunny, um, name aside, I don't really like this one. Um, I'm not sure, but like, I really don't like his like slim design, which is weird. It's like mostly his legs. It's like, mate, those are fucking twigs. Fuck out of here with that bullshit. Um, I'll be interested to see what he evolves into, especially typing-wise. As um, a few people have started complaining that like if we get another five fighting type, then they might not choose him. But like, it like for me, I don't mind. Like I wouldn't mind if he does turn into another five fighting type. It's just that like. Does he or would he bring anything new to the table since we've had a physical attacker in the form of Blaziken, a more mixed attacker in Infernape, and technically a defensive Pokemon or a tank in the form of Ember, although Ember didn't really bring anything new to the table. <laughs> So, like, maybe if you get, like, a speedy special attacker out of, um, score money, then, yeah, I'll be down for that, maybe. Um, the Water Lizard, Sobble, um, I like its overall design, for the most part, except its feet. <laughs> Why does...
does it only have like two toes slash fingers? It's like what? It's like I was down with it like up until I saw its feet. It's like What? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> Get this out of here. But like again, um uh, It would be interesting to see what typing gains upon evolution, as I think possibly ice, poison or dragon would be Sobble's root. If it was poison, I would definitely choose him over my chosen starter, which <laughs> you all know by now all know by now. Um Dragon will be interesting considering that um We've still yet to technically get a starter that turns into a dragon type permanently. And of course, Ice is like. Water Ice is like one of the best typings out there. So. <laughs> give, like, please give us a Water Ice typing. I, I really think Empoleon should have been a Water Ice type. Or like a generic Penguin to Pokemon should have been a Water Ice type. Um, and finally, Grookey. The best boy? I just fucking love. <laughs> like, if there wasn't one thing, like, I don't really like is that, like, most of his body is green. It's like... Hmm. We've had some of the most simplest designs with these three starters, and I don't mind that. It's that... They're kind of edging on the point where it's just like... These are too oversimplified, just a little bit. They are the starters, so they're supposed to be oversimplified, but they might have taken it too far. Um, just quickly, I think I did like a, a little like thing. It was like these probably won't be what these are shiny, but like I did like quickly edit them in my editing software or my. Photoshop alternative, uh, alternative sketchbook and like I think if they were anywhere like, anywhere like probably like 50% close to what I did I would hunt all of them in a heartbeat <laughs> it's like continuing on with like the actual adventure no fuck that shit I'm shiny hunting those fucking starters uh, um so what one thing I think they should do, especially with the whole concept of sword and sword and shield, is that um the starter should have split evolutions depending on either if their attack or defense stats are higher, or just simply what version you're playing on. Since they did do that with legendary, so that isn't out of the question. And I think it would be a fun i like a fun newish idea to have like a bridging path on a Pokemon. Like, on a set of Pokemon that don't normally get that treatment. Not to mention, it would also vary up your playthroughs a lot. <laughs> Since instead of the three starters, of three final forms, you would get six. So, yeah. Um, I still love the, like, the whole shading style that they've gone with. Since I think it's about time that like we've had a change since uh <laughs> for like two generations now we've had like the same thing. It's like boy. Um, I'm not getting my hopes up too much right now. It's just like my main hope is like it's not as plot heavy as Gen Seven, but if it does have plot, it's kind of not forced upon you as much. What I'm thinking of is that since the using like since they did release Let's Go, maybe this one won't be as tutorial heavy as Sun and Moon were. That's my main hope right now. It's just that. You know? <laughs> keep the experience nice having or keep the experience flow nice and well and if they did have tutorials please give us the option to skip them 
saying that's a thing that they did with Generation 2, and that hasn't come back since. So, please. Give, give me a skippable, skippable tutorial, please. Uh, um... I guess in general, like, I actually did listen to, like, a few songs in Paper Mario, which is surprising, since, like, since, like, in my practice one, I did get all of the badges I could without going to Bowser's Castle and all the star shards. Like, you'd think I'd hear at least one song here and there, but, like, I was doing something else the entire way through. Or I had something on in the background the entire way through, so I wasn't listening to the actual game, and, uh... <laughs> boy! <laughs> There's a reason I, um, had the first 15 minutes of the Honey Pop finale with Paper Mario music, since, uh... Boy, boy, it's good. Um, my favorite, no doubt, is definitely the um, boss fight, boss fight theme with um, Crystal, or with the Crystal King freeze. It's like, what's with Nintendo in making ice themes just so goddamn badass? It's like the weird thing is like, it's the first instance of this. I'm fairly sure since. It has only really been a thing recently, like I think, um, Wario Land The Shake Dimension had, uh, Frizzy Fields, that theme was amazing. Wally World had the, um, Iceberg person, boss thing, and that was amazing. <laughs> it's like Nintendo and Ice, it's like you're bound to have some good music in there. Also, oh yeah, um, Mr. Blizzard from Paper Mario Stick Star, that had, had a good, good thing, a good thing too. Boy, it is amazing. <laughs> uh, just not even fucking mentioning what I'm doing, what I've been doing since, like... I could basically pretty much explain, like, I pretty much explained everything I was doing back in the first run, or first attempt at this, so... <laughs> It's pretty much covered, and like, if you're still lost at what I'm doing right now, on like episodes like 21, uh, mate, you got some catching up to do. Uh, uh, like, do I want to edit the um next one before like going back into Emerald, or like, do I want to um do the thing? Mm. I'm not sure. Maybe I'll edit the first episode since, like, that's pretty much, like, the basis of, like, editing the first episode will make editing the uh, next two much easier. Since, um, I'm, I think I will drag the entire thing through so I can splice up the audio my friend's audio since he recorded it in one big chunk. Oh, at my request, since that would make things a whole lot easier. <laughs> on him. Not for me, <laughs> but on him. It, it would make it easier, but like... I don't mind like, that extra bit of work, to be honest. Okay... I don't know, maybe like... At the point I'm watching it now, I've only like, out of the effects in, but, like, I think I might, uh, I might, like, pull some of the more important parts out, and, like, have them either be in the original place, or, like, have them be, like, at the bottom corner there, maybe. I don't know, you'll see it, so, like, maybe I'm thinking the day fan count, maybe money? No, if, like, the for like Wolf of Borski, maybe I'll have the money, but like for fans, I won't. Or like if it's heavily tied to fans, I won't, sort of thing. Yeah, I think we'll do that. Yeah. And also, I think I might play one with the effects more since like 
at the current point, it's blurry enough that you can't read the smaller font, but like, I can still read like the bottom line tab things. I'm not too sure. <laughs> You'll see. <laughs> you you would have seen, or you have seen it by now, sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I've been watching way too many vines. <laughs> Uh, it is a really guilty pleasure of mine, just watching vines over and over again. Uh, not sure why I do it. Hmm. So I really want to get back, like, I've started, like, slowly getting back into ch chutney hunting. That's, like, my main hunt I want to do before, like, delving back into, like, finishing my hunts that I've started recording, like, last year is, like, Musu to hunting for a snow runt. Preferably a female, but like, I don't like frost lasses shiny that much. I mean, just having the snow runt, a shiny snow runt, will just be good, because like, it is a good shiny. <laughs> Boy. It's like. I like shinies that either swap. The colors between evolution, so like the Psy Psyduck and um Golduck having the um blue, light blue Psyduck is good, but like they kind of messed it up with Golduck, something. Um, I saw like blue, orange, and purple shinies started liking white shinies since um that's become more of a thing nowadays, and like. If it fits the Pokemon and is a part of the first one where like it's a color swap between the evolutions, I do like the green shinies. It's like Shizzle's Shizzle, shiny. That that's good to me. It's like uh, I've seen like the people like people complain about. It. It's like it's bad because it's green. It's like what? It's like, it's clearly imitating Cypher. Do you do not see that? <laughs> or are you just annoying it? Because it's green. Uh. So, like, Shiny Umbreon was bad, but now since they darkened the green a little bit, it, it's, it's back in the good range. Well, it's in the good range now. Sort of thing. So like this might just maybe be like black shinies are overrated. <laughs> it's like Charizard, Rayquaza. It's like really. <laughs> you could have been creative about this, but like you chose black. Okay, buddy. You do you. Do you. So blue flames on shiny uh, shiny fire types. Best way to um, get me to shiny hunt a fire type Pokemon. Do I have any shiny fire types? I don't think I do. <laughs> uh, because like, it's like the type that aren't as common. Yeah, I think the only shiny fire, uh, shiny fire type I have is um, Reshiram. <laughs> Actually, I think I might pause the recording now just to check if that's correct. So I'll see you in a bit. Yeah, um... Shiny Reshiram is the only shiny fire type I have on my copy of X. Although I do have a shiny Magby, which I think I may have evolved already. Not too sure. But yeah, uh... <laughs> what? <laughs> Excuse me? I need to sh hunt some fucking fire types. Maybe get down... Uh, I've wanted to start shiny hunting a shiny Fennekin, but like, my shiny starter luck is just terrible. I'm surprised I even got a shiny tree go <laughs> at all. Uh, although they have like over like 800 eggs hatched. It's like why? Uh, <laughs> I just love how I'm not being talking about this at all. As I said before, but like, still. Uh, 
So like, I think just quickly before this finishes, I think I'm considering about going back and updating the thumbnails for the series so it all fits within the new design of it. Uh, I'm not sure about that, like, again, tell me if you want me to do that or something, because like, I mean, it would be, it, it's cool to see the evolution of like my thumbnails, especially right now, but like, I kind of want this uniformity to it all. But yes, as we wrap up, I'll just get on with the outro. Um, do we finally have the gun get your shift, or we'll be getting it quite soon? And uh, next run is so Isa. But until then, that is when we'll see you.